Welcome to EPG Padshala. Today uh, we are going to take up uh, the module titled Culture and Class Struggle in Literature, focusing on Antonio Gramsci and Raymond Williams. Now this module has been prepared by Vamshi Krishna Reddy from uh, NIT Raurkela. I am Anju Narayan, a retired associate professor from Delhi University. Uh, now to begin with, I would like to give you an idea about what uh, this module is all about. Now this, uh, uh, this module, it uh, introduces you to Gramsci's ideas of uh, culture, class and the idea of hegemony as a powerful force in a capitalist society. And also Raymond Williams seminal work analysis of culture. Now um, in Marxist theory society is divided into two categories the base and the superstructure. Briefly the base constitutes the means of production that is tools, machines, factories, land and raw material and relations of production like workers, division of the work, private property, capital, bourgeois and proletariat etc. And the superstructure comprises of various institutions such as media, religion, judiciary, art, family, philosophy and most importantly culture in a general sense. Now since idea of culture is of utmost importance to various societal formations, there is great deal of research and debate as what constitutes culture and how do we understand it. Several theorists from various perspectives have tried to theorize and define culture. Now, in this module, we would look at most, uh, we look at the most important theorists, Antonio Gramsci, uh, his dates are 1891 to 1937, and Raymond Williams, whose dates are 1921 to 1988, who broadly fall under Marxist criticism, but have developed their own space in the history of literary theory and criticism. Now, uh, Let's take up class and power struggle. I'll elaborate on this. Antonio Gramsci, General Secretary of the Italian Communist Party, was arrested in 1926 by uh, the then fascist Italian state and subsequently sentenced for 20 years in prison. However, his long and cruel confinement had resulted in one of the finest and most critical works, Prison Notebooks, uh, published in 1926. Now, the concept of hegemony propounded by Gramsci has been uh, central to the study of cultural studies uh, for a long time. For Gramsci, hegemony is a political idea formulated to explicate the significant absence of socialist revolutions in the Western capitalist societies. The concept of hegemony is employed by Gramsci uh, to cite to a state in process in which uh, a dominant class in collision with other classes does not simply command a society but determines each and every movement of the people by exercising intellectual and moral leadership. Hegemony necessitates a particular variety of consensus. A social group attempts to project its own specific interests in the common interests of the society as a whole. In a sense, the idea is applied to indicate a society in which, despite exploitation and oppression, 
there is a high degree of consensus. Society as a whole in which various classes and groups seem to actively assist and support and strongly follow ideals, objectives, values, political and cultural meanings of dominant classes. Now, for instance, throughout the history of modern Britain, elections were contested by only two main parties, such as Labour and Conservative. On every ele election, the electoral competition revolved around the question, who best can manage economy, usually inferred as capitalism. Hence, each time the political discourse built by media determined and controlled by the needs of capitalism, which is presented as the only interest and needs of society. Now, this instance can be an uh, epitome of how interests of one specific powerful section are universalized and presented as the interests of the society as a whole. However, the condition seems to be perfectly natural since domination of particular class is quite invisible. Gramsci argues that capitalism's hegemony is the consequence of fundamental social, cultural, political and economic changes that have occurred over a period of at least 300 years. Though hegemony infers a society with a high degree of consensus, one should not misunderstand that it's a society with fewer conflicts. It is only meant to indicate a society in which conflict is restricted or controlled and channeled into ideologically safe grounds. Now, this sense of hegemony is continually maintained and sustained by dominant sections and classes while building negotiations and concessions to various subordinate groups and classes. For example, we can observe classic case of subordination in the historical case of hegemony of Britain over Caribbean. In order to sustain dominance over vast majority of the people, the British had dislocated large numbers, large numbers of African men, women and children and transported them to the Caribbean islands as slaves and subsequently imposed British culture on them. Since they were rooted out of their culture, it was easy for the British to control and command over the next generations by instituting English as the official language. However, linguistically, this phenomena may not be called an imposition, but creation or reception of a new language for a vast majority. Though the language that has been received is not simply English, but transformed English with new grammatical structures, the rhythm, stresses, and uh, intonations with some kind of influence from African languages. Gramsci calls this process as the consequence of a negotiation between uh, dominant and subordinate groups. Appropriation of language both can be seen as incorporation as well as resistance. Hence the process neither imposed nor voluntarily received but had developed as a result of hegemonic struggle between two languages, a dominant and subordinate languages. Now we shall move on to uh, the contours of hegemony. To elaborate, Gramsci argues that hegemony is essentially organized by those 
whom Gramsci calls organic intellectuals. Intellectuals are categorized by their social function and utility. This means that all men and women possess the capability for intellectual thinking, but only certain men and women fulfill the role of intellectuals. Gramsci further explains that each class develop their intellectuals organically. However, some of the sections of intellectuals construct homogeneity and an awareness of their own function, not only in the economic sphere, but also in the political and social fields. Along with the, these intellectuals, the capitalist entrepreneur constructs himself as the industrial technician. The specialist in political economy, the organizers of a new culture, of a new legal system, etc. Organic intellectuals operate as class organizers. It is this class of intellectuals who shape public discourse and organize the reform of moral and intellectual life of society. Matthew Arnold can be considered as one of the significant organic intellectuals. Now we move on to Raymond Williams. Raymond Williams is uh, one of the most uh, influential theorists in the area of cultural studies and uh, his contribution uh, to understanding culture has been enormous. He has contributed significantly to our understanding of literature, cultural history, theory, television and the media. His work and ideas are immensely influenced by his origins in the Welsh working class and, as, and its lifestyle. And as an academic, he was professor of drama at Cambridge University. Now, we move on to Raymond uh, Williams' analysis of culture. In the analysis of culture, published in 1961, Williams outlines that there are three general categories in the definition of culture. First, we have the ideal, in which culture is a state or process of human perfection in terms of certain absolute or universal values. Uh, according to this definition, the role of cultural analysis is essentially the discovery and description in lives, of, lives and works of those values which can be seen to compose a timeless order or to have permanent reference to the universal human condition. Second, there is the documentary record, the surviving and existing texts and practices of a culture. This definition espouses that culture is the body of intellectual and imaginative work in which, in a detailed way, human thought and experience are variously recorded. By this definition, motto of cultural analysis is one of critical appraisal or criticism. This can lead uh, to a form of interpretation, interpretation akin to that endorsed with concern to the ideal, which takes us back to Matthew Arnold's opinion of culture as the best that has been thought and said. This view also takes us to the historical approach, an act of critical reading and interpretation to observe its importance as a historical document. Third the category of looking at culture is, there is the social definition of culture in which culture is a description of particular way of life. The description of social and definition of culture is very significant to the emergence of culturism. Subsequently, this definition brings three more different methods of defining culture. Firstly, the anthropological view that sees culture as a symbol of a particular way of life. Secondly, the argument that culture expresses certain meanings and values. Thirdly, the assumption that the interpretation of cultural analysis ought to be the clarification of the meanings and values implicit and explicit in a particular way of life, a particular culture. Further, social definition of culture as a particular way of life 
culture as expression and representation of a particular way of life and culture anal and cultural analysis as a tool of restructuring a particular way of life builds both the general perspective and the basic constituents of culturism and then williams goes on to define the theory of culture as the analysis of relationships between various components in a whole way of life the analysis of culture is the effort to attain the nature of the institution which is the amalgamation of these complex relationships in a sense analysis or interpretation of certain institution is the study of their essential kind of organization the relationships which work or institutions incarnate as parts of the organization as a whole the structure of feeling uh, uh, while looking at the complex organization while looking at the complex organization of culture as a particular way of life the intention of cultural analysis is essentially to infer what how a culture is expressing the actual experience through which a culture was lived the important common element a particular community of experience in brief williams calls this as the structure of feeling he describes the structure of feeling as uh, i quote this structure of feeling is the culture of period it is a particular living result of all the elements in the general organization unquote Structural feeling is a set of shared values of a specific class, group or society. This term is employed to depict a dynamic structure that is a cross between a collective, cultural, unconscious and an ideology. For example, he uses the term to explicate the fashion in which many 19th century novels deploy magic solutions to close the gap in that society between the ethic and the experience as john story gives examples such as uh, how men and women are released from loveless marriages as a result of the convenient death or the insanity of their partners legacies turn up unexpectedly to overcome legacies turn up unexpectedly to overcome reverses in fortune villains are lost in the empire poor men return from the empire bearing great riches and those whose aspirations could not be met by prevailing social arrangements are put on a boat to make their dreams come true elsewhere all the above sample examples are presented as epitome of a shared structure of feeling the unconscious and conscious working out in fictional texts of the contradictions of 19th century society the main contention of cultural analysis is to interpret the structure of feeling through the documentary record from poems to buildings and dress fashions as he exhibits clearly as what always we look for in the essential life that the whole organization is there to convey the importance of documentary culture is that more explicitly than any, anything else it shows that life to us in most direct and visible ways when the living witnesses are absent williams argues that culture always exists at three levels one needs to dif differentiate and categorize these three levels of culture even in its most superficial sense First there is the lived culture of a particular time and place which is fully accessible to those living in that time and place and second we have recorded culture of every kind from art to the most everyday life and culture of a period there is also as the factor interconnecting lived culture and period cultures the culture of the selective tradition lived culture is a culture as lived and practically experienced day to day life and existence in a specific place and at a specific moment in time and most importantly 
the only people who possess full access to these cultures are those who really lived its structure of feeling. Hence, when that historical moment of practical living is foregone, the structure of feeling also starts to fade. Once that particular moment is gone, then cultural analysis would have access only by the documentary record of the culture. But the documentary record itself shreds under the procedure of the selective tradition. Next, we have uh, the process of selectivity and the formation of traditional culture. Williams warns that between a lived culture and its reconstitution in cultural analysis, mm -hmm. evidently a great deal of detail is lost. For example, he points out that no one can claim to have read all the novels of the 19th century. What we have is the specialist critic or writer or thinker who claims to have read few hundreds and uh, subsequently the enthusiastic Academician, academician who probably reads fewer, further the educated reader who reads few. Hence we find a clear process of selectivity which allows the above three groups of readers from disseminating a sense of the nature and feature of the 19th century novel. Moreover, no 19th century reader would in fact have read all the novels of that century. However, Williams argued that the reader of 19th century had something which no later individual can wholly recover. That sense of life within which the novels were written and which we now approach through our selection. For him, it is very important to note that through selectivity, it invariably produces a cultural record. And a tradition, while we witness a rejection of constable areas, of what was once a living culture. Furthermore, as Williams argues in his seminar work, Culture and Society, uh, that there will always be this kind of selectivity determined and controlled by the dominant class of that time. This crucial argument takes us forward to understand the relation between culture of selectivity and interests of dominant class of the society. Within a given point of time, this selectivity is determined by different kinds of social considerations, especially such as class interests. Hence, the traditional culture of any society seems to match and serve to its contemporary value system and various interests of the dominant classes. Through body of work, however, via continuous selection and interpretation. These ideas of selectivity and formation of traditional culture is particularly important for the student of culture. Since the selection is inevitably constructed on the basis of contemporary class interests and given the instances of reversals and rediscoveries, it follows that the relevance of past work in any future situation is unforeseeable. In this critical background, it is extremely difficult to fix certain categories such as what is good and what is bad, about what is low and what is high literature in contemporary culture because of obvious influence of dominant classes on these ideas. Another important argument in William's cultural analysis is that the selective cultural tradition is not only a selection but also importantly an interpretation. Though one cannot overrule or alter the dominant tradition, but by going back to the text or practice to its historical moment through cultural analysis, demonstrate other historical alternatives to contemporary interpretation and the particular contemporary values on which it rests. With this effort, one can comprehend clear differentiation between the whole historical organization within which it was expressed and the contemporary organization within which it is used. This process, as argued by Williams, would provide real cultural processes. Uh, while confronting uh, the ideas of Matthew Arnold and F.R. Leavis on idea of culture, 
Williams departs radically from Levisism in a number of ways. He argues that art has no special place as it is like any other human activity along with other activities and espouses the case for a democratization of culture as a way of life. His work, Culture and Society, published in 1963, distinguishes between middle class culture as the basic individualistic idea and the institutions, manners, habits of thought and intentions which proceed from that and working class culture as the basic collective idea and the institutions, manners, habits of thought and intentions which proceed from this. He further argues and appreciates the achievements of working culture. He opines that the working class because of its inherent right from industrial revolution developed a unique culture in the form of the cooperative movements, the trade unions or a political party. Hence, he strongly argues that the working class culture is fundamentally social rather than individual, collective rather than personal. And given a context, this collective imaginative work is a remarkable creative achievement. So, uh, I hope I have been able to put across Antonio Gramsci and Raymond Williams' ideas across to you uh, successfully and if you have any doubts uh, you can refer to the EPG Partshala website. Thank you.